Evan Smith, International Man of Mystery, 2004 Mach 1 Mustang, 5 speed. We're testing the 2004 Mach 1 Mustang. This car is bright orange. It's an exciting car that Ford has built to bring back a little of the nostalgia of some of the Mustangs that have been built in the past. Of course, clearly the most interesting part of this car is the shaker hood scoop. It's functional and it allows the dual overhead cam 4.6 V8 engine to breathe fresh air through the top of the hood. This is one of the coolest cars Ford has built probably in the last 15 or 20 years. There's a lot of engineering that's gone into it. It's got a four cam engine under the hood, 4.6 liters, that's 280 cubic inches, or 281 cubic inches. It's got a red line of 6,800 RPM, so it's definitely a high winder. It's a strong engine, it likes to be revved high and it makes good power. And surprisingly, it still has pretty good torque, even at low RPM. We're on the road course at Raceway Park with it, and the Mach 1 is eating it up. It's set up for handling. It's got excellent feedback through the steering wheel. It's got a very comfortable ride, and that's partially due to the comfort weave seats that are certainly reminiscent of the 69 Mach 1 Mustang. A 3.55 rear axle ratio. And it's got a very user-friendly RPM range. The engine likes to be revved very high. We like to push this thing above 5,000 RPM, shift it right about 6,700 while we're cruising. Out on the road course, you're looking for some good handling. We like to cut through the turns and show what this thing has. We'll downshift, take this tight hairpin turn now. See, we'll swing around and apply the power. Run the transmission up through the gears. There's nothing like looking out over the hood and seeing that shaker hood out there. It's hard to take your eyes off. It's definitely something the competition does not have. Earlier, we tested the GT. Now the Mach 1, it has a lot of the same tendencies as far as understeer, but with a bit more power you can induce oversteer very easy by stabbing the throttle coming out of the turns. You feel like you're king of the road. long sweeping right hander you can really apply the power and the Mach 1 sticks to the track you feel the G loading the tires doing their job to grip the track and we've driven these cars on the road and you could drive this car every day the clutch pedal has got a wonderful feel to it it's not too stiff but it's got nice feedback communicative steering really goes where you want it to. Like the GT, this has four-wheel disc brakes. And Ford really going out with a bang with this car, especially in this bright orange. This thing looks, feels, and drives like a race car. But it gets pretty good fuel mileage, and you can definitely drive this thing every day. Be the envy of all your automotive enthusiast buddies. Accelerating through the back straightaway here to about 110 miles an hour. We'll slow down. Brakes have a nice feel to them. The pedal's got actually a, a slightly hard feel, which we like because you can really modulate the power of the braking and really press hard on get a good feedback from the braking system. Analog brakes, of course, are standard, and we're going to test them out here in a little bit on the road course, pushing as hard as we can, some of the turns, the three cars that we're testing 
the GT, the Cobra, and of course the Mach 1 here. It's amazing how, based on the same chassis, all, all three cars handle totally different. The GT, sort of the everyman's car, good for everyday driving. Very smooth, very quiet, yet good power. The Mach 1 is a little more aggressive. It's got, of course, the stripe package and the shaker hood scoop. And it's got a little bit more power. This engine's really strong, just over 300 horsepower. But it's really neat because when you rev it low, it's really, really tame. And then when you stand on it, it gets loud and revs real high. And that's where it makes most of its power, above 5,000 RPM. This car's got a little bit of a tendency to push, so we're going to try to be as smooth as we can on turn in, on entry of the turn, roll off the brake and get the car to rotate through the turns, and it does that really well with a lot of grip, and you can apply the throttle nice and smooth, and that gets you through the turns just as fast as you can go. Like the GT, this car is very flat, but there is some body lean or some roll rotation through the turns. You can feel the car on the springs. It's set a little bit higher than the Cobra. And if you push the car to its limit, you can really get the car to roll over and push hard on the suspension, and that makes the tires bite. But you don't want to push too hard because then they'll slide out from under you. This is the tightest turn in the track. We'll get through it nice and smooth. Get back on the power, roll uphill. It's a long sweeping right hander and you can really feel the G-force is throwing you to the outside. One of the things I really like about the Mach 1 are the pedals. They're spaced nicely, you can get some good heel and toe braking going on. And the pedals have a nice metal insert with some nice rubber round grips so your feet don't slide off and you have a really good pedal feel. This car really gives a lot of feedback to the driver. This Mach 1 really picks up where the GT leaves off slightly higher steering effort but that's not necessarily a bad thing especially in performance driving situations and this car feels very light feels very light under you like you can just throw the car around and still maintain excellent control This car just screams high performance. And imagine all this performance for under $30,000 in this day and age, that's pretty incredible.